Okay, are you going to choose the forbidden fruit or are you going to choose God? And here's the thing. When you choose the forbidden fruit that's over here, what do you have to do? I'm over here. Come and get me. Forbidden fruit. Yeah, keep coming, keep going. Yeah, see, so what happened with her relationship with God? Got further away, right? Thank you. That's all. That's all you have to do. When we reach for the forbidden fruit, whatever that temptation is, by its very nature, it takes us farther away from God. I want you to remember that visual in your head. Whenever you give in to sin, it takes you farther away from God. In fact, have you experienced that? Have you given in to temptation and you felt guilt and you felt farther from God right away? Have you experienced that? Yeah. It's, it's not cool. It's not fun. And so, man, if, if there was just some way that we could remind ourselves as we're being tempted, like, you don't want to do this. Remember the guilt that you always feel. Remember how it takes you farther away from God. I'm actually going to mention the next step later on that, that maybe we can do. But, man, somehow we got to remember that and say, I don't want that. I don't want that. It's not worth it. Right? It's not worth giving in. I don't want the consequences of it. All right. Um, Number three, my sin only affects me. And if you've caught the refrain that I've been saying, you can say it with me. My sin only affects me. Yeah, and the forbidden fruit won't hurt you either. It's a lie, isn't it? My sin only affects me. First of all, sin has a way of affecting other people either directly or indirectly. Some obvious directly is if I steal from someone it, I affected them directly, didn't I? They now have something missing that cost them money. I affected them directly. But I'm going to suggest that even if it's not a direct, if you can't see a direct connection, it does affect others regardless, indirectly. All right, so um, in Deuteronomy, I'm going to put it up on screen. Deuteronomy 28, what you do affects your loved ones. What you do when you sin, it affects your loved ones. Deuteronomy 28 is a chapter called Blessings and Curses. Blessings for those who would obey God and live for God. Curses for those who disobey God. Okay, that's one of those laws of, of nature as well. So um, let's go next screen. Go on, next one. Here we go. Okay. No? That didn't do, that didn't do the right. Our uh, PowerPoint's not playing along. Okay. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. And the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herd and the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. Okay, that's for those who fully obey the Lord. Verse 15 has a however. However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all his commands and decrees I'm giving you today... All these curses will come on you and overtake you. You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Your basket and your kneading trough will be cursed. The fruit of your womb will be cursed. And the crops of your land and the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. You will be cursed when you come in and cursed when you go out. Question, what is the fruit of your womb? Say it with confidence. Your children, the fruit of your womb. It's talking about your children. And so it's saying if you fully obey the Lord, one of the blessings, if you're obeying him, is the fruit of your womb. Your children will be blessed. If you don't, it says the fruit of your womb, things will not go well for your children. And so what we do affects the rest of our family. I'm going to suggest another way that it affects our family. And I don't have a direct book, chapter, and verse to give you on this, but... I, I've heard this from other places, and I believe this to be true, that when you give in to temptation, you open the door of evil to come in to your house. So whatever it is you're doing, whatever you are 
participating in sin, you're opening the door and you're, and you're allowing evil spirits to come in. Who else lives in your house? Whoever else lives in your house, you then let them in to attack them as well. We, we've got to stop and think before we give in to temptation. Your sin doesn't just affect you. It affects those around you as well. Just like when, when you're in a car, you know, and, and your car breaks down and you have a passenger in your car, guess what? It affects your passenger too. They got to deal with the breakdown as well. A sin has a way of affecting others, either directly or indirectly. God says you're going to be blessed if you live for him. You're going to be cursed. Uh, God says when you're living a sinful lifestyle, nothing is going to go right for you. Your life is going to be like a country song. You lost your job. You're broke as a joke. Your car broke down. You're, you know, uh, your, your dog died, and now you're in the doghouse. Like, whatever. You know, things are not going to go well for you. And so if you're sitting there and you're going, okay, my life is like a country song right now. Maybe you need to get right with God and start living for him.